dear students uh, welcome to the next lecture of microcontrollers so today we will start a new topic uh, interfacing with ADCs sensors and actuators so the first part of this lecture will be the interfacing with the ADC part and in the next part we will do the interfacing with sensors and actuators okay so ADCs as you know is an analog to digital conversion okay so this is a these are the devices that are uh, among the most widely used devices for data acquisition okay so uh, generally you sense some signals some physical quantities um, uh, or some electrical signals that represent some physical quantities uh, so basically, um, for example, temperature, pressure, humidity, velocity, etc. So <coughs> most of the IoT sensors that you have, uh, they, you know, uh, sense uh, some of these uh, physical um, quantities and uh, the corresponding electrical signal that represent this uh, these quantities uh, it's, these are analog in nature okay but uh, the microcontroller which which uh, which forms the main part of the actuator so any iot uh, environment uh, will have basically sensors and actuators okay so sensors are the one that senses these uh, these physical uh, quantities and uh, they produce uh, an equivalent electrical signal which is analog in nature and then that's that electrical signal drives some actuators so actuators are the the devices that actually you know um, do some actions okay so for example let's say you sense the temperature okay that is your sensing part and then the actuation part is let's say uh, you switch off the heater okay so switching off the heater is the actuation part so there has to be some um, some movement or some some physical task uh, in involved uh, which which are the function of these actuators okay so these actuators and also the sensors like uh, the, the the data that is acquired okay uh, that corresponds to the sensed values like temperature pressure velocity humidity uh, those data are stored in the sensors in a digital format because all the devices inside the sensors are digital in nature and also in the actuators the devices that are there are mostly digital in nature okay so there are a lot of microcontrollers uh, that are embedded uh, in the sensors and actuators and those microcontrollers need this this data not in the analog form but in the digital form okay so therefore analog to digital conversion is very important okay so a physical quantity is converted to electrical signals using a device called a transducer or sensors and then the analog to digital converter is required to convert the analog inputs to digital values okay so uh, so a typical adc chip is the adc 804 and we will study about it now so adc 804 is an ic uh, which is an analog to digital converter and it works with plus 5 volts and has a resolution of 8 bits okay so the conversion time is another major factor in judging an adc so usually the conversion time is defined as the time it takes the adc to convert the analog input to a digital binary number and the conversion time varies depending on the clock signals applied to this uh, to this ic okay so the clock signals are applied to these two pins CLKR and CLKIN and it cannot be faster than 110 microsecond okay so so there there is a 
fundamental limitation of this chip so the as so the fastest that it can operate is 110 microseconds so we can have other advanced chips which can uh, convert in a faster time and this time to convert is a very important uh, you know a parameter of an ADC chip so so here is the <coughs> you know diagram for the ADC 804 IC chip so it has many parts so let me go through them one by one so the first uh, thing to note is that this VCC which is a plus 5 volt power supply uh, this could also be used as a reference voltage when your VREF by 2 uh, input is open or not connected ok. So we will study the functionality of VREF by 2 later in more detail ok. But, um, right now just uh, try to appreciate that uh, this VCC is the 5 volt power supply and sometimes it also functions as a reference voltage when this V ref by 2 this pin is open. So then comes uh, your uh, differential analog inputs. so this V in plus and V in minus. So the differential input is the difference between these two usually this pin is grounded uh, like this. So, in that case this voltage will be equal to 0 and whatever you have here input that is your differential input voltage. Then you have this CS pin which is an active low input and this is used to activate the IC. Uh, then you have this start conversion so this WR, so when WR makes a low to high transition the ADC 804 starts converting the analog input value of V in uh, to an 8 bit digital number and that is the output ok. So this, these are the 8 bits of the output from D0 to D7 and they will be connected through some LEDs. Then next is the end of conversion or the read pin. So, when the conversion is finished, so when we have a digital output here, uh, it goes low. So, this uh, sorry not this one sorry this one inter. So, this one goes low. So, um, to signal the CPU that the converted data is ready to be picked up ok. So, this uh, switch will be closed and then this will go low to to you know signal the CPU that the converted data is ready to be picked up. And then finally, this read pin uh, which is the output enable pin and this is a high to low um, I mean a high to low pulse is applied to get the 8 bit converted data out of this uh, this um, this outputs ok. So, basically this is the read pin, so you are reading the digital output here ok. So, now, um, so as I just said these are the different functions of the chip CS, read, write uh, and, uh, and then we have this uh, clock signal. So, you have clock in and clock R. So, clock in is an input pin connected to an external clock source ok. So, if you go back to the pin diagram, so you can have a crystal oscillator and uh, this clock in can, uh, can have the frequency generated by this crystal oscillator. Otherwise, um, you can also have uh, this clock R. So, to use the internal clock generator also called self clocking, uh, the clock in and clock R pins are connected to a capacitor and a resistor ok. So, so basically uh, sorry this is not a crystal oscillator my apology this is a capacitor. So, this connection that is shown here is basically 
for internal clocking. So, this clock R and clock in is connected to a resistor and a capacitor. Okay. So, if you are using an external clock, then this clock in should be connected to that external uh, clock. Okay. External clock. Uh, otherwise, this arrangement is made. So, you have a resistor and a capacitor and then you have a you have a internal clock generator and the frequency of this clock is given by the values of the resistor and the capacitor that you are using. So, the frequency is given by this relationship and typical values are of, of, of R are of 10 kilo ohms and C is a 150 picofarad. So, then you get an F of 606 kilohertz and the conversion time is 110 microsecond. So, now comes the function of V ref by 2. So, it is used for the reference voltage. So, if this pin is open, then the analog input voltage is in the range of 0 to Vcc okay, or 0 to 5 volts. But if you want the analog input in the range of let us say 0 to 4, then you set V ref by 2 to 2 volts. So, <coughs> if you look into this table, so when V ref by 2 is not connected, then V in is of the range 0 to 5. If it is 2 volt, then 0 to 4, if it is 1.5, then 0 to 3 and so on. And then uh, for the output, you have 8 bit output. Okay. So, you can have uh, 2 to the power 8 or 256 possible increments or 256 possible uh, combinations. Okay. So, basically whatever input analog voltage you are having, uh, whatever be the range, uh, if it is 0 to 4 or 0 to 5. So, basically the lowest number 0 should be corresponding to um, to to the lowest number of this 256 possible output. So, that that is basically the lowest is all the 8 bits equal to 0. Okay. So, this should be equal to the 0 volt analog uh, input and then the highest 5 or 4 whatever it is depending on V ref by 2 that highest has to be corresponding to this 256 or all one combination of these 8 bits. Okay. So, therefore, or rather 255 from 0 to 255. Okay. So, therefore, you have 256 possible outputs and the entire range of analog voltage whatever it is that has to be divided into these 256 possible outputs. So, therefore, the step size is basically the total analog range divided by the possible digital outputs. So, when you have 0 to 5, then each, uh, each number in this digital uh, 8 bit format, uh, an increment of 1 in this format will mean uh, these many volts or millivolts in the in the analog or in other words if your analog input signal changes by let us say 19.53 then the output changes by 1 okay the digital output okay and this is for this 0 to 5 volt case for the 0 to 4 volt case if your analog input changes uh, between uh, changes by 15.6 to millivolt then the output will be changing by one unit in the digital domain. So, that is the that is the step size or the granularity of the analog input voltage. Okay. So, <coughs> if you set V ref to very low 0 0.5, then the input voltage range would be between 0 to 1 and then you have the lowest possible increment here. So, basically um, this is this this granularity is more narrow here uh, than compared to let's say this one. Okay. So the smallest increments that um, 
can be measured in the analog voltage is also determined by this V ref. If V ref is low, then the total analog range is low and then there you, you have the increments very low. So, you can measure very small increments or, or in other words the sensitivity of the device is higher. So, <clears throat> so D0 to D7 these are the digital data output pins and the converted data is accessed only when your CS pin is 0 and RD is forced low. And to calculate the output voltage, we use the following formula. So, D out is V in divided by step size and step size is the smallest change or the resolution and that is what is here given in this slide. So, step size, <coughs> if you divide V in by step size, you will get the D out uh, which is the digital data output in decimal and then <coughs> the binary equivalent of this will be displayed in D0 to D7, <coughs> excuse me. So, there is an analog ground and a digital ground in this IC804 uh, and uh, the analog ground is connected to the ground of the analog V in and the digital ground is connected to the ground of the VCC pin and this is done to isolate the analog signal from transient voltages caused by digital switching of the output. So, whenever the output changes, uh, the, the outputs in this pin will change okay. and uh, let us say uh, it will be 0, 0 and then it will change to 1 and so on. So, this changes in this uh, in this bits. Uh, will will cause some transient voltages and that will affect the analog V in. So, this will then uh, affect the accuracy of the digital data output. So, that is why this analog ground and digital ground are separated. Okay. So, now moving on let us see the function of the INTR pin. So, this is basically a kind of interrupt which sig signals the end of conversion. So, this is an output pin and is active loss and it is normally high and when the conversion is finished, it goes low to signal the CPU that the converted data is ready to be picked up. So, after INTR goes low, we make CS equal to 0 and then send a high to low pulse to the RD pin to get the data out of the ADC. So, this is what happens. So, these are the steps that must be followed for data conversion by the by the ADC 804 chip. So, first you make C s equal to 0. So, C s becomes 0 here and send a low to high pulse to pin W r to start conversion. So, this goes low to high and then this is the point where you are starting the conversion okay. and then keep monitoring the INTR pin. So, if the INTR is high, keep pulling until it goes low. If the INTR is low, so if the INTR goes low, this signifies end of conversion. Okay. And after the INTR goes low, so at this point, we make C s equal to 0. So, C s uh, is made 0 again. Initially, it was momentarily 0 and you start the conversion. After the conversion is finished, you make CS0 again and send a high to low, so high to low pulse to the RD pin. So, this is the RD pin and, and this will signify that the data is ready on the, on the output and then you just uh, read that data and save it to uh, to a register inside your microcontroller. So, so this is a this is a free running test mode of the ADC H04 to test if, if it is ok. So, the a potentiometer is used to apply a 0 to 5 volt analog voltage to the input pin V in and the binary outputs are monitored on the LED of the digital trainer 
and then the C S input is grounded and the W R input is connected to the inter pin. So, this is a free running mode. So, this will uh, this will keep blinking this LEDs according to the changes in this potentiometer. So, this will uh, this will tell you whether the IC is functioning properly or not. So, let us see an example. So, write a program to monitor the INTR pin and bring an analog input into register A and then call a hex to ASCII conversion and data display subroutines do this continuously. So, so this input, uh, so these informations are given. So, pin 2.6 of the microcontroller is connected to the WR. So, this is the start conversion and this needs a low to high pulse. Pin 2.7 um, so, when low this is the end of conversion, pin 2.5 is the, the RD pin. Okay, so, pin 2.7 is basically your INTR. Okay, so, pin 2.5 is the RD pin. So, a high to low will read the data from the ADC chip and pin uh, 2.4 is CS and then uh, port 1.0 to 1.7 are the output of the ADC 804. So, you are making P1 as your input by loading 0 FF to P1. So, basically you have to you will read the data uh, D0 to D7 which is coming from the output of ADC 804 to these pins of your microcontroller. Now, you clear 2.4, so you will you let C s to be low, then you clear 2.6 to set W r equal to 0 and then uh, you set this again, so that a low to high pulse is given to this W r pin to start the conversion okay. and then you keep monitoring the INTR which is pin 2.7. So, you are staying in this line until this pin uh, is is going low. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, after this uh, this is uh, let me check. Uh, I think this should be J N B or let us see. So, 2.7 when low. Um, so, usually this is high just a second. So, yeah, okay. So, um, I think this should be J N B. So, basically you are until it is um, sorry no J B is fine. So, when it is high jump on bit you are staying in the same line okay. when it goes low it goes to the next line uh, to signify that the conversion is finished and then you are sending you are clearing P 2.5 which is connected to R D. So, a high to low transition is applied here and this will read the data from the ADC chip. So, you read the data which is in port 1 and move it to A and then you call this subroutine for converting this hex data to ASCII. You also a call a data display subroutine and then you set this port 2.5 to make R D equal to 1 for the next round. So, and then it jumps to this line to just continuously do this uh, conversion. Okay. 
So this is an example of how to use the ADC chip with your 8051 microcontroller. So, uh, so as I was saying, uh, if you want to have, so there are two types of clock. So one is the self clocking. So if you want to have self clocking, then your clock R and clock in are connected with a resistor and a capacitor and in this fashion. So, you, you can generate a clock frequency which, uh, which is given by this. So, where R is the value of this register and C is the value of this capacitor. Uh, if you want to have an external clock, then you have to you know uh, connect in this fashion. So, in that case, your uh, you can use the clock from the crystal oscillator of the 8051, but then the frequency of the crystal is too high. So, you use two D flip flops uh, like this to divide the frequency by 4 and then that is directly fed to the clock in pin. Okay. And, and then you can have an external clock that drives this ADC 804. So, there can be two types of clocks. So, one is this and the other one is this. Now, let us see how to interface a temperature sensor to 8051. So, usually a temperature sensor uh, is, uh, is uh, implemented using a thermistor. So, a thermistor responds to temperature change by changing the resistance, okay. but this response is not linear. So, you can see if you have 0 degree, then the output is this, then if you have 25, then the output goes down sharply. So, you have a non-linear behavior like this. Okay. So, to calibrate this change of temperature with some voltages, uh, you need to you know uh, calibrate this non-linear resistance values uh, and this is uh, a bit complex. So, the complexity associated with writing software for such non-linear devices uh, has led many manufacturers to market a linear temperature sensor where the change in temperature and the change in output uh, that output can be a resistance or a voltage. Uh, is linear. Okay. So, one such linear temperature sensor uh, is the LM34 or LM34 series of uh, precision ICs, which are temperature sensors whose output voltage is linearly proportional to the Fahrenheit or Celsius temperature. So, LM34 or 35 requires no external calibration since it is inherently calibrated and actually it outputs 10 millivolt for each degree rise in Fahrenheit or Celsius temperature. Okay. So, <coughs> so the next concept uh, is called signal conditioning. So, when you are actually trying to uh, connect a sensor, let us say a temperature sensor with your ADC to convert the voltage associated with the temperature into a digital uh, voltage and then store it in the microcontroller let us say. Uh, so, for all this you need to have signal conditioning. So, signal conditioning is a widely used term in the world of data acquisition. So, it is the conversion of the signals it can be voltage, current, charge, capacitance or resistance produced by the transducer, transducers, transducers to a voltage which is sent to the input of the A to D converter. So, if the transducer output is a voltage itself then you do not need to do much, but if it is a current, if it is a charge, if it is a capacitance, if it is a resistance then you have to convert it to a voltage. So, that that analog voltage is input to the A to D converter and then you get the digital output. So, therefore, this uh, this uh, intermediate step 
to convert these quantities into a voltage is called signal conditioning. And signal conditioning can be a current to voltage conversion or a signal amplification. So, if you have the output of the sensor as a voltage, then you just amplify this voltage to get an analog voltage that is input to the AWT converter. If it is something else, then it can be let us say if it is a current, then it, it, it will be a current to voltage conversion. So, going back to the thermistor, so the thermistor changes resistance with temperature. So, the resistance is changed. So, therefore, this has to be calibrated to a voltage by the method of signal conditioning. So, while the change of resistance must be translated into voltage in order to be of any use to an ADC. So, that is why you need signal condition. So, getting the data from the real world, you get the analog data, temperature, pressure, etcetera. Uh, then a transducer, you know, converts that into an electrical signal. So, this can be a voltage, can be a current, etcetera. And then you do signal conditioning to get a voltage here. and then you have this ADC. So, this is the digital output of the ADC which goes to your microcontroller. So, let us uh, go back and focus on the temperature sensor. So, so let us look at the case of connecting an LM35 which is a linear temperature sensor to an ADC 804. So, here you have each degree change in temperature is a 10 micro volt increase in voltage. So, this is a linear graph and then uh, this can be you know mapped to this digital output. So, if you have 0 then this is all zeros. if you have 10 then this is 1, if you have 20 then this is uh, this thing so and so on. So, basically you have this temperature each degree rise in temperature can be viewed as a digital output. Okay. So, since the ADC 804 has 8 bit resolution with a maximum of 256 steps and the LM35 or 34 produces a 10 millivolt for every degree of temperature change, we can condition V in of the ADC 804 to produce a V out of 2560 millivolt full scale output. Okay. So, therefore, in order to produce the full scale V out of 2.56 volt or 2560 millivolt. So, basically the idea is that each bit change in the digital output will be a 10 volt increment. So, to make that the final maximum value is this. Uh, so, from 0 to this we have 256 values. So, the total full scale or the full swing or the dynamic range has to be between 0 to 2.56 volt. Okay. And to do that, we need to set V ref by 2 that is equal to 1.28 to get a dynamic range of 0 to 2.56 volt. So, this makes V out of the ADC 804 correspond directly to the temperature as monitored by the LM35. So, this is what the whole concept is. And this is the final connection. So, you have uh, you have this L M 35 or 34 and then uh, <coughs> this is input to your ADC and then the V ref by 2 is set to 1.28 volt and then you have this digital output that goes to port 1.0 to 1.7 of your microcontroller, we have an external clock that comes from the crystal of the 8051 that is divided by 4 using this D flip flops and that goes to the clock in pin. And also notice that we use the LM336 2.5 Zener diode here to fix the voltage across this 10 K port at 2.5 volts. Okay. The use of this should overcome any fluctuations in the power supply. Okay. So, so this is the entire connectivity. So, uh, we have other ADC chips also. We have ADC 808 or 809. So, these are 
actually having 8 analog inputs. So, instead of 1 input for ADC 804, it has 8 analog inputs. So, it allows us to monitor up to 8 different transducer using only a single chip. Okay. And the chip has 8 bit data output just like the ADC 804. And the 8 analog input channels are multiplexed okay, and selected according to you know 3 address pins A, B and C. So, this is what happens here. So, you have these uh, address pins. So, based on the state of this, you choose either input 0, input 2, 3, 4 up to input 7. Okay. So, all these 8 inputs are multiplexed according to the signal that is uh, or the digital bits that is put in this 3 pins. Okay. So, so, you can connect all these inputs to 8 different transducers and based on this change in C B A here, you first take the input of transducer 1 connected to I n 0 and then convert it to the digital output and then it goes to the next state where you take the input here and then convert it to the digital output and so on. So, that is how you can uh, you can function. So, these are the steps to program the 808 uh, or 809. So, select an analog channel by providing bits to A, B and C addresses then activate the ALE pin. So, the ALE pin here uh, it needs an L to high a low to high pulse to latch in the address. So, whatever is placed here that will be latched and then activate the start conversion pin here by an high to low pulse to initiate the conversion and then you monitor the EOC pin. So, this is equivalent to the INTR of your 804. So, this uh, signifies the end of conversion. So, you monitor this to see whether the conversion is finished and then finally, activate the output enable uh, this one to read the data out of the ADC chip. So, to read this data um, you activate this output enable. So, this is activated by an high to low pulse in the OE pin that will bring the digital data out of the chip. So, <clears throat> so with this I will stop here for the interfacing with ADC part. In the next video lecture, we will discuss about the interfacing with actuators. Okay. So, I will stop here today and I will see you in the next video lecture. Thank you.